the Nightly Business Report. Good evening. Tonight, President Ranil Wickremesinghe speaks on negotiations with creditor countries at the Industry Expo 2024. Tourism in the Asia-Pacific sees a steady rise into normalcy as Sri Lanka's arrival numbers are released. The ASPI and S&P SL20 end in the red once again as the losses continue to mount at the Colombo Stock Exchange. And the annual CFA Society Sri Lanka Capital Market Awards shine a spotlight on industry innovators. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us on the Nightly Business Report. President Ranil Wickremesinghe announced forthcoming negotiations with creditor countries and also revealed plans to boost Sri Lanka's industrial sector. This was at Sri Lanka's first International Industry Expo 2024 exhibition, which kicked off today at the Bandaranaika Memorial International Conference Hall in Colombo. He stated that these plans feature the creation of a new commercial bank, an economic commission and an institute called Enterprise Sri Lanka to promote a competitive and digitized green economy. When looking at the state of our economy, we experience bankruptcy, but we are anticipating that in the coming weeks, we will be able to come to a consensus with our creditor nations to effectively bring us out of the bankruptcy and ease the discussions with private lenders. We have achieved this in a span of two years. Many thought it would not be possible in such a time span. But we cannot be satisfied with just these results. Following these discussions, we have to consider how to pay off the debt that we have incurred. The Industrial Development Board of the Ministry of Industry is organizing the International Industry Expo 2024 for the first time as per the instructions of the Minister of Industry and Health, Dr. Ramesh Patrana, with the aim of taking the country's industrial pride to the world whilst evaluating industrialists. Over a thousand international industrial entrepreneurs as well as local large-scale and medium-scale industrialists representing various countries are going to participate in this exhibition. A proposal has been made to increase the price of an ordinary postage stamp to 100 rupees by July. It was reported that the postal department is currently incurring an annual loss of 700 million rupees. If the losses continue to increase, it might reach 5 billion rupees by 2025. According to officials, less than 1.5 million people use postage stamps, yet the entire country bears the burden of the postal department's losses. The price of a stamp was 15 rupees until 2022, and the current price is 50 rupees. Fitch Ratings says the recovery in Asia-Pacific tourism continue in 2024, albeit a slower pace due to less favourable base effects. Meanwhile, in Sri Lanka, the total number of tourists who have arrived in the country so far is 959,391. According to the data report released by the Tourism Development Authority, 27.3% of the tourists who arrived in the first 17 days of June are from India. The number of Indian tourists who have arrived in the country is 17,102. Additionally, a significant number of tourists have arrived from the United Kingdom at 5,070 tourists, China at 4,381 tourists and the Maldives at 3,657 tourists. I must say Sri Lanka tourism is in a very positive uh, position right now. As you know, uh, as of now, uh, as of 17th of June, we, have, we are over 950,000 tourists in the country. And I'm pretty sure by end of June, we'll, we are going to cross the million mark. Our overall target for year end is 2.3 million, which is our target. From an economic point of view, we have achieved already uh, up, to, up, uh, up to date right now about 1.5 billion US dollars. And I think our target for 4.5 billion dollars can be achieved by end of this year, which will help the economy a lot. Fitch forecast visitation in the Asia-Pacific to reach 92% of the 2019 level, the nominal international tourism receipts exceeding that in 2019 by 6%. Most Fitch-rated APAC sovereigns have recovered from the services balance shock due to the collapse in tourism revenues. <laughs> A purchasing manager's index compiled by the central bank showed Sri Lanka's manufacturing recovered strongly in May 2024 from April festival holidays, while services also continued to expand at a slower pace. 
Services companies have also begun new hires. The manufacturing PMI index was at 58.2 in May from below 50 in April. The statement said all sub-indices except for employment rose above the neutral threshold during the month, resulting in an overall increase in the index value. The increases in new orders and production sub-indices were mainly attributable to the manufacture of food and beverages sector. Expectations about the near future was also positive except for concerns about the global shipping amid unrest in the Middle East. Employment increased in May due to new recruitments made by several companies. The Financial Intelligence Unit of Sri Lanka entered into a Memorandum of Understanding with the Financial Intelligence National Centre of the Kingdom of Bahrain to exchange financial intelligence related to money laundering and associated predicate offences and in relation to terrorist financing offences. This MOU has been entered into by the FIU Sri Lanka in terms of the provisions of the Financial Transactions Reporting Act No. 6 of 2006. The FINC Bahrain serves as the Kingdom of Bahrain's central hub for the collection, analysis and dissemination of information regarding financial crimes. Tea is on the up as January to May 2024 cumulative tea exports totaled 98.15 mass kilograms, recording an increase of 7.35 mass kilograms vis-à-vis 90.80 mass kilograms of January to May 2023. Iraq has been ranked number one amongst major importers of Ceylon tea with a total of 12.2 mass kilograms, an increase of 18% year on year in this quarter against the previous year's 10.42 mass kilograms, whilst Russia has secured second place with 10.67 mass kilograms, a 5% increase. All categories showed negative variances in rupee terms except for green tea, whilst marginal gains were recorded in dollar terms when compared to the corresponding period in 2023. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. SPI and S&P SL20 are down today as well. Continuing this red streak from last week to get a run up on the details of today's market, close numbers we join Brendan Fernando from SC Securities. Yes, the all share price index closed at 12,225 with a decline of 34 points and the S&P SL20 index closed at 3,612 with a decline of 9 points. The turnover was recorded at 2.74 billion rupees with a share volume of 150.4 million. The top five gainers were Blue Diamond Jewelries, SMB Leasings, Nation Lanka Finance, Tess Agro, and Muller and Phipps. Ambient Capital, Access Engineering, and Melsa Corp recorded the highest turnover during today's session. Today, we were able to observe nine crossings, of which Ambient Capital showing 1.28 billion, Access Engineering with 176 million, and Melsa Corp showing 91 million. The sluggish markets of this week are beginning to show reactions post the bill auction today, with some negativity due to delays in external debt restructuring and secondary markets also show slightly higher rates with liquidity levels moving down. For an analysis on the status quo, here is Tarusha Ashokar from First Capital Holdings. We saw a sizable upswing in auction yields today for the third consecutive week and across the board, yields edged up by over 36 basis points. Uh, CBSL raised LKR 260 billion at the auction today and accepted the total offered. So accordingly, a three-month bill rose by 50 basis points to 9.39%, while uh, the six-month bill increased by 51 basis points and closed at 9.81%. Uh, however, one-year bill saw a relatively small increase, edging up by 36 basis points and closed at 9.9%. Today, we uh, also saw an oversubscription for three-month and six-month bill amidst a uh, higher reception, although one-year bill was uh, undersubscribed. Post the auction outcome, uh, secondary market came to a standstill but saw some selling pressure during the uh, early hours of the day. 
selling interest was uh, mostly centered on short to mid tenors uh, predominantly on 2026 and 2029 maturities uh, on the overnight liquidity side uh, there was a significant and sudden reduction yesterday as it closed at LKR 56.7 billion from 123.9 billion. Uh, but however, today we saw a slight improvement with overnight liquidity increasing to LKR 80.8 billion. Uh, we believe that uh, yields may continue to see some upward pressure in the short term until the external debt restructuring is finalized. Gold struggles to capitalize on the previous day's bounce from the vicinity of the $2,300 mark and oscillates in a narrow band during today's session. Spot Gold traded at $2,313.88 per troy ounce, that's down 0.25% from yesterday's gold price per ounce and up 11.98% since the beginning of the year. Meanwhile, a survey by the World Gold Council showed about 29% of the central banks in the world intended to increase their gold reserves in 2023, up from 24% in 2023 and just 8% in 2019. Meanwhile, a survey by the World Gold Council showed about 29% of the central banks in the world intended to increase their gold reserves in 2023, up from 24% in 2023 and just 8% in 2019. The WGC said the planned purchases are chiefly motivated by a desire to rebalance to a more preferred strategic level of gold holdings, domestic gold production and financial market concerns including higher crisis risks and rising inflation. About 81% of 70 central banks that responded to the survey expected global central bank holdings of gold to go up from 71% in 2023. While in prior years, gold's historical position was the top reason for central banks to hold gold, this factor dropped significantly to number five this year. Oil prices fell today following data indicating an increase in crude inventories in the US, the world's biggest oil consumer. Brent crude traded at $85.09 per barrel, a fall of 0.28% from the closing price of $85.33 per barrel in the previous trading session. West Texas Intermediate traded at $80.50 per barrel at the same time, a 0.26% drop from the previous session that closed at $80.71 per barrel. The negative trend stays strong as Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated further against the US dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today compared to yesterday. According to the People's Bank, the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have increased from 298 rupees and 56 cents to 299 rupees and 35 cents and from 308 rupees and 67 cents to 309 rupees and 48 cents respectively. At Commercial Bank, the buying rate of the US dollar has increased from 297 rupees and 82 cents to 299 rupees and 6 cents, while the selling rate has increased from 308 rupees to 309 rupees and 25 cents. Now let's observe how the rupee behaved against the other global currencies. Take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. The annual CFA Society Sri Lanka Capital Market Awards recognizing and rewarding excellence in the local capital markets was held late last evening at the Oak Room in Cinnamon Grand. This year's awards were held under the theme of the power of public-private partnerships, focusing on the current status of public-private partnerships in Sri Lanka and their future potential. 
Speaking on the occasion, CFA Society Sri Lanka President Aruna Pereira noted that this event recognizes the tireless efforts and remarkable achievements within the capital market community, as well as among the listed entities in Sri Lanka. It's a testament to the dedication, hard work and visionary mindset that propels the industry forward. Awards were presented under the categories of Best Stockbroking Research Team, Best Equity Research Report, Best Sector Research Report, Best Investor Relations, Best Unit Trust Fund and Best ESG Reporting with awards for gold, silver and bronze in each category respectively. Sri Lanka's Hella Apparel Holdings PLC is looking to raise 1.5 billion rupees through a rights issue to settle a sub-subsidiary's debt. Hello will issue 3.19 million ordinary voting shares at a proportion of 8 new for every 33 existing at 5 rupees each. The company said in a stock exchange filing that it is to be utilized for the purpose of making funds available to the sub-subsidiary of the company to enable such entity to settle existing bank borrowings. The current stated capital of the company is 5.7 billion. The structure and details of subsequent capital raises will be determined and announced by the board of directors at a later date. The rights issue is subject to the CSE approving in principle the issue and listing of shares and obtaining shareholder approval at a general meeting. Earlier this year, the company acquired Focus Brands, a UK-based brand licensing house, for eight million sterling pounds. Sri Lanka-based tech company HZNED Business Solutions will relocate 350 million rupees raised through an initial public offering for acquisitions in APAC and East African regions for market development instead. HZNED said in a stock exchange filing that subject to obtaining the approval of shareholders by special resolution, the board of directors proposes to utilize such sum for suitable market development activities during the current financial year. The board of directors noted that investments made by the company into product and market development activities since the IPO, as highlighted under Objectives 1 and 2 in Section 5.6 of the prospectus, are beginning to yield good results for the company. Shareholder approval will be sought for the reallocation of IPO proceeds at the company's annual general meeting. KPMG in India is scheduled to host its 31st All India Partners Meet in Colombo starting tomorrow. The annual meeting of the India firm is one of the largest meets to be hosted in Colombo, with over 600 India partners and their families attending it to celebrate achievements for the year gone past and to discuss the future plans. The conference will be addressed by President Ranil Vikramasinghe and other leading Indian business and industry luminaries. The firm said they celebrate relationships with their clients and people that are based on the foundation of mutual trust and respect. The same holds true for Sri Lanka and India as nations having deep-rooted social, cultural and political relations. KPMG also commented on the recent signing of a number of tech and energy agreements between the two nations with hopes of furthering connectivity. KPMG in India has extensive experience in facilitating investments and enabling ease of doing business, having supported the central government of India and several state governments in similar endeavours. The firm stated that they value their long-term relationship with KPMG in Sri Lanka, which is the oldest chartered accountancy firm in the country, celebrating more than 126 years of existence. Former Sri Lankan cricketer and businessman Muttaya Muradharan is to invest 1,400 crore Indian rupees to set up a beverage and confectionery unit in Karnataka. Muradharan, who has a soft drink and confectionery manufacturing plant in Sri Lanka, has expanded his businesses to the South Indian state. The cricketer businessman plans to manufacture beverages and confectioneries under the brand Muttaya Beverages and Confectioneries. 46 acres of land have already been allocated for the project and operations are expected to begin in January 2025. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back. Asian stocks were mixed after U.S. benchmarks ticked to more records following the latest signs that the U.S. economy may be slowing without falling into recession. 
Tokyo's Nikkei 225 index climbed 0.2% to 38,570.76. The Hang Seng in Hong Kong added 2.9% to 18,430.39, while the Shanghai Composite Index lost 0.4% to 3,018.05. In Sydney, the S&P ASX 200 edged 0.1% lower to 7,769.70, and South Korea's Cosby surged 1.2% to 2,797.33. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq closed at record highs, void by Nvidia's continued surge to new peaks, while Dow ended barely higher in subdued pre-holiday trading following softer-than-expected U.S. retail sales data. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq again notched record closes on Tuesday as Nvidia surged to new heights, overtaking Microsoft to become the world's most valuable company. The Dow ticked up marginally, the S&P 500 gained a quarter percent, while the Nasdaq just barely eked out a gain, but still notched its seventh straight record close. Shares of NVIDIA gained 3.5 percent, lifting its market capitalization to $3.22 trillion, higher than both Microsoft's and Apple's. Other chip stocks extended their recent rallies as well, boosting the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index to a record high. Qualcomm gained more than 2 percent, Arm Holdings climbed more than 8.5 percent, and Micron Technology added more than 3.5 percent, hitting a record high. Those gains offset losses in Alphabet and Meta platforms, which both fell more than a percent. Economic data on Tuesday showed retail sales rose less than expected in May, while another report showed surprisingly strong industrial production and manufacturing output. Markets slightly increased bets on two Federal Reserve interest rate cuts this year, according to LSEG's FedWatch, despite policymakers just last week projecting only one. NVIDIA has become the world's most valuable company following a staggering rally in its shares, underlining the outsized role investors expect artificial intelligence to play in the global economy over the coming years. NVIDIA became the world's most valuable company on Tuesday on an insatiable demand for its high-end processors. The chipmaker dethroned tech heavyweight Microsoft just days after overtaking iPhone maker Apple. NVIDIA stock has surged about 173% so far this year, compared with a rise of about 19% for Microsoft. Demand for NVIDIA's chips is outpacing supply. Tech giants Microsoft, Meta Platforms, and Google owner Alphabet are competing to build out their AI computing capabilities. But NVIDIA commands more than 80% of the market share for AI chips, making it a major winner from surging AI development. The company also recently split its stock 10 for 1, increasing the appeal among individual investors. It took nine months for the company's market value to expand from $1 trillion to $2 trillion, which it hit in February. It reached $3 trillion in early June. Well, that concludes today's Nightly Business Report. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings around the business globe. Until then, I'm Sina Maya Dunne. Have a good night.